Welcome back, my friends. Perry once more here to talk about networks. And I'm not talking social networks. I'm not talking networking at that uh, business sales event. I'm talking about network networks. I'm talking about cables and wireless routers and switches and all those great things that make our modern communication system function. The reality is most of us don't deal with networks. We don't really even see them. They just kind of magically work for us. And as you're looking at information technology, you're looking at as a potential career, you're definitely going to come across networks and networking. So you really got to have a kind of a fundamental understanding of it. Now, again, this is a primer. I could literally talk about networks. I'm not exaggerating for a year. And there's a lot of training and courses out there that really dig into networking. And if you're looking for a career path and you're pretty mechanical and you're looking to be a little more hands-on, networking is a great way to go. But for the purposes of this course, we're really just going to try to cover the basics and get you a core foundational understanding of what a network is and how they work so that you know you can evaluate that as a potential career path or when you're talking to other IT professionals, you at least have some grounding to have an intelligent conversation. So what is a network? A network is basically when you get two or more computers talking to one another. Back in the day, you know, two guys were like, hey, I got a computer and I got a computer and they linked them together and suddenly networking was born. But networking and networking equipment, the foundations of networking really make our modern world possible. And we would be unable to communicate with each other if it wasn't for networking and all its foundation and principles. So I can't really stress enough how critical networking is to the overall information technology world. Now, as I said, a network is two or more systems joined together, generally via a switch or a router, communicating with a common language called a routing protocol. And you know, you, we you know speak English or French or German. To have a conversation, to sit down, you gotta be talking the same language. And the purpose of a network is to enable sharing and of files and information between multiple systems. So examples, you pick up the phone at work or you pick up your mobile device, you're talking over a network. When you buy something using your mobile device, you go out to eBay, you're hitting mobile multiple networks. Um, pull money out of the ATM, when you pay with a credit card, when you drop off your car, whatever it is, you're hitting a network at some point. When one system needs to talk to another system to exchange information, that's going over a network. So the biggest network in the world, you got it, the internet. The internet is our greatest network. The thing is huge. Now, truth be told, the internet isn't really one network. The internet network, the internet is probably like literally tens of thousands of networks, if not more, all joined together under a common set of rules and guidance. Even though it's open, it really is amazing how well it works. And the thing is, there's 7 billion of us, almost 7 billion of us right now on planet Earth. Uh, about 3 billion right now have access to the internet, which has just been huge growth over the last 10 years. About 85% of them are North America, 75% is in Europe, 50% in Latin America, 30% of Asia. But, and this blows my mind, 90% of the population is projected to have internet-enabled device by 2020. Imagine the ramifications. Um, for the first time in human history, almost every single human being will be able to communicate with almost any other human being on the planet. So that's really changing how things are set up in our world and the fact that we're becoming so open and networks are what's making that possible. Now, most of these folks are going to be able, you know, connect to the internet are going to be over like some sort of mobile device, um, like a cell phone or a tablet. And that's really where there's been huge expansion. But without networking, none of that communication would be possible. So network components. I want to just dig in and kind of give you some fundamentals real quick of the different network components and how they fit together. Network interface card. So you're at, you're at your office and you plug you know the cable into your laptop or you have a desktop there and there's a cable going out into the wall somewhere. That cable is plugging into your computer via a network interface card. And what the network interface card does is it decrypts all the data coming across the cable and process it and allows your computer to consume it. So your computer would be unable to communicate with the network if it didn't have a network interface card. Next we got a switch. A switch is what you plug all those cables into. So your 
computer at work that you got a cable and it goes into the wall, at some point that cable ends up plugging into a switch. And a switch is basically a device that connects all those cables together and allows the computers to communicate over the cables via what's called a packet switching um, protocol, where little packets get passed back and forth and that data gets chunked up from its big pieces into little pieces. But the switch connects it all together. Now cables, don't underestimate the power of cables. We are wireless right now. And one thing I want to point out is not all computers maybe have a network interface card now. They may have a wireless connection. It's the same concept whether you're plugging a cable in or you're going over a wireless network. But at some point, I guarantee all your servers and all your networking gear is plugged in with cables. And cable technology has come so far in the last 15 years, it's crazy. Before, you couldn't really squeeze through huge amounts of data because the cables were limited. Now, with fiber optics and all these advances they made, there's really no limitations to how much data you can move across your network. The router, super important, the router. The router is a really very smart device that connects multiple networks together. So the router basically um, will bridge the gap between a LAN to make it a WAN. So let me spend a little a, a time here for a second. A LAN is a local area network. So think one location, couple different commute computers plugged into a switch or a router. That's it. You know, they're communicating to maybe a server, one location. A WAN is multiple locations. So maybe you have two offices, one in Seattle and one in Portland. They're talking to each other. They're doing that over a wide area network, WAN. So LAN, local area network, WAN, wide area network. They're bridging the gap together. And that's made possible because of the router. Next, we got TCP IP. And that's a protocol that it's like the language, like English is our network protocol or French. You know, we want to sit down and have a conversation. TCP IP, that network protocol, is how compu different computers are talking to one another. It's their common language. It's how they understand all the data coming in from one point to the other. And we talked a little bit about data packets. So as data is moved across the network, it gets chunked up into tiny little pieces of information. So let's say you try to send around like a 20 meg picture. Well, you're just not going to send the 20 meg picture. What's going to happen is that packet it's going to get chunked up in little packets and then moved across the network and then reconstructed. So a packet consists of two kinds of data. There's the control information and then user data or known as the payload. So basically you chunk it up and the control information says, oh, this is a picture and this is how it should look. And it puts the pieces back together. All this technology took a long time to create and kind of figure out. And it's, again, it's what's made our modern communication world possible. There have been lots of advances since, um, you know, we've come up with TCIP and data packets, but it's really this foundation that's still the core of modern networking and the internet as we know it. All right, more networking components. Servers, definitely a huge networking component. Servers provide a lot of different services that make networking possible. For example, they provide security authentication so folks can authenticate from one server to the other and communicate with one another. Firewalls. Woo! So you guys have probably heard all these stories about companies getting hacked and data getting lost. Well, one of the core ways that you protect your data and you protect your company is by having a firewall. A firewall enables you to protect and block folks from getting access in ways that they shouldn't. Now the trick here, when you set up your firewall or when you set up your security processes, you really need to be able to allow folks to work effectively, but block folks who aren't supposed to be doing work on your network or getting access to it. So it's a really tricky job and there's very specialized folks called security analysts and firewall specialists who that's their job to make sure they have the firewall properly configured, but it's just something you can't set it and forget it. You always have to be keeping up with the most modern kind of security threats and risks and really maintaining and monitoring your firewall and looking for funky activity to ensure that no one's up to no good. So the firewall really, it ensures the system and applications and users have appropriate access to the resources they need so they can do their job. Virtual private networks, super critical. 
Because you know why? It lets you work. It lets you work remotely. A virtual private network creates basically an encrypted connection between your computer, your laptop, whatever it might be, to your company's network so you can get access to your information and do your work. And we're going to spend a little, I'll show you a demo of that here in a second. Internet protocol address. Everything on the internet, everything on your network, your home network, um, your work network, everything has an address. And that address is called an internet protocol address. And it's a number. And it's in four blocks. Uh, this 192.160.1.1, that's an internal network. Um, for example, 206.143.5.7, that's an external IP address. And when you want to find something, you want to find a website, you want to find an email server, you're not going to probably remember an IP address. We hit thousands of sites a year. And to have a big list of IP addresses, that's just not really an effective way to do it. So in order to manage all those IP addresses, you need what's called DNS. And it's Dynamic Name Service. Uh, I have this wrong here. I have to fix that. But it's Dynamic Name Service. And the Dynamic Name Service basically is what translates um, your IP address into a proper name. So instead of being 206.143.5.7, it's CNN. Or instead of being 192.160.1.2, it's your email server. We are a species who likes names. Numbers, we don't remember numbers that well. I have a hard time remembering my phone number. In fact, I don't think I know my wife's phone number because it's plugged in my phone under her name. So we love names, not so crazy about numbers. So DNS, the dynamic name service, allows you to translate that number to a friendly name so you can easily find it. So when you go to Google, you put in the name, Google goes out and says, oh, I see this website, and then they route you to that IP address, and that IP address takes you to that proper um, location, whatever it might be. But for you, you never see that IP address. All you ever see is that friendly name. All right, so we're gonna talk about some network architecture, kind of core, how different networks exist. I just wanna give you, again, this is a primer, so I'm just trying to give you the fundamentals, but I wanna give you just a little background on how different networks are configured. So at the simplest, the bare bones network, you got your peer-to-peer. -peer. Now, this was much more common back in the old days of you know when you had maybe an office of 15 people and you just plugged them all together and they communicate with each other. Now you see a lot of peer-to-peer -peer networks for gamers. Gamers will get together and they'll grab a router or a switch and they'll plug in all their gaming systems and they'll play together so they can have optimal speed. But at the simplest terms, it's just a bunch of computers plugged into a switch or a router so they can communicate with each other. That's it. Then we got server-based network. Now we talked about a lot of the services that are provided from a server. And that could be things like email or file server or intranet. So basically a server-based network is like a peer-to-peer -peer network, only it's plugged into the server. And the server is maintaining things like authentication. Now instead of, you know, you're able to log onto the network via the authentication the server is providing. You're at getting access to the email. You're getting access to the files. But all that is controlled from the server. And a really simple network, and this was very common a few years ago, where you would have you know, maybe 20 employees and they would connect to a server and that server had things like email and the file server and just really basic. Now, we talked local area network versus wide area network. And again, a local area network is located um, in one physical location. So maybe a single office or a single floor in a building. It's a local area network. It's contained unto itself. You might have you know, internet access, but you're basically not connecting multiple networks together to exchange information. Whereas a wide area network, you can have multiple networks. So you could have an office, say, in Seattle, an office in Portland, and you could bridge those two together so the office in Portland can get access to files in the office in Seattle. And the way you would do this is by configuring a wide area network. Now, a wide area network, you got to have a router and you have to have connectivity bridging the gap between the two of those. But within a wide area network, you also need different subnets. Now a subnet is broken down here. We see the IP addresses, the 192.186.100. That identifies that third 
um, number there identifies the subnet. Over here we have 200 that identifies the subnet. You could have 300, 400, 500. You could have different subnets. And then the fourth would be the actual IP address of the box. So that IP address says this computer is 192.186.100.2.3.4. Whereas this would be 192.186.200.678, whatever it might be. But basically, you're breaking up your different environments into different subnets and letting those different physical environments communicate with each other. And there's lots of reasons to do this. Um, for one thing, it's very secure. You basically are able to lock down who gets access to what. So you can say, okay, I'm only allowing a specific IP address to go to this specific server. So you can share information, be secure, and this is a very common way of bridging the gap between different physical locations via a wide area network. All right, connecting via VPN, talked about that. So let's say you're on your laptop, you connect to the internet, you fire up your VPN client, it creates a secure encrypted tunnel, hits the firewall, your corporate firewall, that corporate firewall hits your router and you're able to get access to your network. So this is a very common practice. You probably have done it yourself. If you're working remotely and connecting and hitting any resources on your network, your email server, your file servers, you're probably going over a VPN connection. All right, common, these guys are kind of the four dominant players in terms of networking. There are definitely more out there. I just put these up because these are the ones I, I run into a lot. By far, the most dominant player in networking is Cisco. Cisco runs the show. They're government, they're private, they're a billion, billion, billion dollar company. And the thing about Cisco is we have a whole section on network administration in the career path, which is after the IT primer. So if you're interested in becoming um, a network administrator or security resource, Cisco and focusing on Cisco is a great way to go because they have a really well-defined educational program where they have like 30 different certifications and Cisco guys make great, great money. So just something to think about. Other competitors to Cisco I see a lot, Extreme Networks, Juniper, both of those make similar products. They make firewalls, they make routers. Um, but I would say definitely Cisco is the most predominant player in the marketplace. Another great technology, and one I'm a big fan of is F5. And they make specific uh, technology for routing traffic. So let's say you're Amazon or eBay or a large company where you have multiple data centers and you're trying to provide an optimal experience for your visitors, for your clients. F5 produces networking equipment that routes traffic to provide an optimal experience for those clients. So it's definitely worth taking a look at. But if you're thinking, hey, I, I'm kind of interested in this whole networking thing, I might want to get into it, really look at Cisco. Take a look at the uh, track for network administrator during the career path, which we'll get into here in a little bit. And that will give you all the information you need about their different certification paths. All right, so what have we learned? A network is basically two or more systems joined together via a switch. That's it. That's it in its simplest form. Obviously, it's become much bigger than that, but that's how it got started. And you need to have a routing protocol to make that happen. We depend on many different types of networks and to socialize and administer our daily lives. Here's the thing. If networking didn't exist, the world as we know it would not exist. We would not be able to communicate with one another in the way that we do. Um, as we said, network protocol, it's basically the language. It's like English, it's how computers talk to each other. The most common network protocol is TCP IP. Um, the IP address, super important, because that's how it communicates with itself. That's the uh, basically address. So if you wanna mail a letter to someone's house, you gotta know what their address is. If you want to be able to get out to the internet, um, or you wanna be able to maybe route an email to someone, you got to know what that IP address is. Every device, the dev every device you're using has an IP address. And dynamic name service is basically the phone book that makes that possible. It translates that IP address to a proper name. All right, my friends, thanks so much. Stick around for the next program. I appreciate it.